Let us find derivative of sine function from first principle and that's the beginning of differentiation or calculus with trigonometry, right? Let's see how we do it and then we'll develop formulas for derivative of cosine and tangent function and from there we'll move forward, okay? So basically what we are trying to say is that if y equals to sine x, then what is y dash equals to, right? This is what we are trying to find out. And we are going to use first principle to get the answer. So by first principle, we mean when we do rate of change, if you remember, if we have a function, let's say f of x, then what is f dash of x? That we did with first principle saying that f dash of x should be f of x plus h minus f of x over h where limit h approaches 0, right? So that is first principle. And we are going to use this first principle to find the derivative for sine function, right? So let us say that f of x for us is actually sine x. Now f dash of x should be limit h approaches 0 for f of x plus h minus fx over h. So which we can write here as, let me write it down, f dash of x will be equals to limit h approaches 0. And when we say x plus h, then x will be replaced by x plus h, right? So we get sine x plus h minus sine x over h. Now, if you remember what is sine x plus h, that means sine a plus b compound angle formula, right? We'll apply that and expand this. We can write this as limit h approaches 0. And that is sine a cos b plus cos a sine b. So we'll write this as sine x cos h plus cos x sine h minus sine x divided by h, right? Now this can be written as, so what I'll do now is I'll take the sine x, rearrange them, and then take sine x common from here, okay? Limit h approaches 0. So if I bring sin, take sine x common, what do I get? I get sine x within bracket cos h minus 1 and I'm left with plus cos x sine h over h. So I basically rearranged all these things, right? So that's what you get. And now what I will do is I'll write this in two terms. Term first over h plus the second term over h. Limit h approaches 0 sine x, the first term cos h minus 1 over h, right, plus limit h approaches 0, first term cos x, it is independent of h, so I'm writing separately, and we have here sin h over h. So that's what we get. Now see from this, sine x is independent of h so when h approaches 0 nothing really happens to this similarly for that matter cos x but these two factors they get affected by h at this stage if i put h equals to 0 what do i get i get sine cos 0 minus 1 over 0 which is 0 over 0 so it is indeterminate how to find limit for these well as you remember and we have already done it in limits. What we do it, let me do it on the side here to show you how to solve this. So we are trying to find limit of this term, which is cos h minus 1 over h. Now since it is 0 over 0, we'll multiply by its conjugate and see what we get. We can do cos h plus 1 over cos h plus 1. So this gives us in the numerator 
cos square h minus 1 over h times cos h plus 1, correct? Now, what is cos square h minus 1? It is minus sine square h, right? So, this could be written as minus sine square h over h times cos h plus 1. And this I can rearrange. Like, I want to write this as minus sin h over cos h plus 1 times sin h over h. Correct? So, do you remember limit for this? If you find limit for this, you know limit for sin h over h is 1. And limit of sin h over cos h plus 1 is how much? If I substitute h equals to 0 here, sin h will be 0. Cos h will be 1. So it's 0 over 1 plus 1, 2. But when you multiply anything by 0, you get 0. So limit of this is 0, right? So now we'll solve further. Limit. So basically this, we can write this as sin x. Limit of cos h minus 1 over h plus cos x limit h approaches 0 for sin h over h, right? Now this limit is 0 as we found here, right? If I substitute h as 0 here, well this is h approaching 0. This term is 1, right? And this term is 0 over 1 plus 1, which gives me 0. So the first term is 0 and the second term is we know limit of sin h over h when h approaches 0 is 1, so we get cos x. So we get derivative of sin x as cos x. So that is the derivative for sin x. So we can write d dx of sin x equals to cos x. This is the most important derivative for trigonometry. And from here, we can develop each and every formula which we are going to use for differentiation for derivatives or trigonometric functions. So let's move forward from here and do calculus. Thank you.